Today, the UK Prime Minister and President of the European Union are expected to hammer out final details of a Brexit deal over Northern Ireland. Technically, the UK left the EU back in 2020, but Northern Ireland has been a point of contention. It is part of the United Kingdom, but has an open land border with Ireland, a member of the European Union. Here with how this impacts all of us, British native and host of Piers Morgan Uncensored on Fox Nation, Piers Morgan. Piers, great to see you. Saw you in person uh, a couple of days ago on Sean's show. Great to see you again. Help me out here. Brexit happens in 2016, finalized in 2020, but there's still more wrinkles to be worked out? Well, Pete, if you think you're confused, let me reassure you, we're all pretty confused <laughs> in Britain too, because you may remember Boris Johnson blathering away, promising us, we got Brexit done, and then talking about an oven-ready deal. Well, it turned out the deal that went in the oven that was supposed to be ready turned out to be a little singed around the edges. And the key stumbling block about Brexit from the very start, from when we first voted to leave the EU back in 2016, seven years ago now, has been this issue of what you do about Northern Ireland, because the island of Ireland is split. The South remains in the European Union, the North remains part of the United Kingdom. And how do you deal with that? And the answer is that Boris Johnson, for all the blathering, never worked out a way to deal with that. Mm. How do you avoid having effectively a hard border? So a lot of British people uh, are, are already getting, I have to be honest, buyer's remorse about that decision anyway to Brexit. Most of the polls now showing there would be a hefty majority in favour now of, of staying in the EU. And the main reason, Pete, has been this confusion over what to do about Northern Ireland. Interesting. Had no idea. Uh, we got to get your take on one other thing uh, on the other side of the globe, which is COVID-19 and the lab leak theory, which the Wall Street Journal is now exclusively reporting that the U.S. Energy Department, so our Department of Energy, believes that the origins of COVID-19 came from a lab leak. You know, Pierce, you remember two, three years ago, if you even suggested that you were a conspiracy theorist, now one of our major departments believes that's exactly what happened. Well, it's an absolutely fascinating report, isn't it? And it, it really goes, I think, back to this whole issue of believe the science. And I was one of those that went along with the scientists. I, I felt if the scientists collectively said this is what they believe happened, then it would be disingenuous of me as a mere civilian to dispute their word. But more and more things are now emerging about COVID where it looks like the scientists simply got it wrong. And whether that's the ability to transmit the virus if you had the vaccine, or whether it's now this revelation about where the original virus started. A lot of people were banished from Twitter, for example, and Facebook mm -hmm. for spreading supposed disinformation by claiming that they believed this started in a lab, even though many eminent people were suggesting that. And it seems to me that one of the big lessons, Pete, that we have to get surely from this pandemic is in future, we listen to the scientists, we respect their right to have an opinion, but everyone should be entitled to challenge those opinions and challenge them vigorously. Because this turns out now to be a situation where if that virus began in that lab, then a lot of those scientists were plain wrong. Yeah, but Pierce, did they get it wrong or did they want the answer to be one thing and were willfully blind to other options? That's not what science looks like. Well, I think it's a very interesting question, and I think that the truth is science, by its very nature, will evolve with facts, and so you have to give them some leeway for that. But I always felt that people like Dr. Anthony Fauci, for example, they like the sound of their own voice on TV too much. He was spending way too much time lecturing people about what he believed was an absolute certainty of his opinion, and a lot of those opinions, whether it's the use of masks, the efficacy of vaccines and transmission and so on, or now where it started, actually all his opinions were wrong about those. So I do think in future, like I say, we've got to examine the science. You've got to listen to all ranges of opinions. And people have got to stop being cancelled on social media for raising concerns, which now look like they were absolutely right. That's exactly right. All right, Pierce Morgan, thank you. By the way, everybody can watch Pierce Morgan Uncensored on Fox Nation weekdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Pierce, thanks. Take care. Good. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.